The tiny home movement is growing in popularity across the country. Tiny living typically is about downsizing and living simply. But two Dover women think tiny homes could be the answer to solving Delaware's growing homeless problem. This tiny home measures 10 by 20 feet. That's 200 square feet of living space. Total. Tiny indeed. But Sue Harris says giving someone with nothing 200 square feet to call his own can make all the difference. There was such a dire need for the next step in getting out of the, the homeless cycle and that was affordable housing and the need for somewhere for these folks to be able to transition to after they've come out of the shelter. Section 8 housing has a waiting list that's over three years long that I don't even think they're taking names anymore. So she and friend Kathy Copera started Port Hope Delaware in February, a nonprofit with an alternative approach to housing. Their idea, tiny homes for the homeless. Harris believes tiny living will put a stop to the getting help, getting a job, can't find a home, wind up back in the street cycle she's all too familiar with through her work with the Dover Interfaith Mission, a homeless shelter. But housing isn't the only answer, but without housing, there, all the other problems that are solved can fall behind the wayside if you end up back in the street again. So it is a huge part of the puzzle. Partnering with Victory Church in Dover, the pilot plan calls for 15 tiny homes for 15 people to start, like this one, equipped with a living space, pull-out bed, bathroom, kitchen, and utilities. We would have gardens and fruit trees and berry bushes and rain catchment systems and solar panels, we're hoping, to make it as self-sufficient and self-reliant as it possibly can. The microhomes would sit on land donated by the church and be named Village of Victory. Apropos, since they're teaming up with Victory Church, which has a robust homeless ministry of its own. The church prepares and feeds 150 meals for the homeless every day. And Victory Over Chronic Homelessness for just $12,000 a pop. That's how much Harris estimates it'll cost to build one tiny home with donated lumber and help from volunteers. Each one of these units can be built for what it might cost for one hospital stay for pneumonia that a lot of these folks in the streets end up with. Each year, the Homeless Planning Council of Delaware conducts a one-night count of the homeless in the state, a snapshot of what the problem looks like in Delaware. In 2015, the nonprofit found 950 people experienced homelessness in the state, 151 in Kent County. In 2016, that number grew to more than 1,000 in Delaware, with 188 in Kent County. We can, in Delaware, really get a handle on this. We've got three counties. We can start with Kent County and spread out. Some zoning and septic issues have delayed the project for now, but Sue Harris says if she can get things up and running again, this stretch of land is where she would like to put all 15 tiny homes when all is said and done. But some neighbors have started a no tiny homes movement, posting signs in their yards. I knocked on some of their doors, but no one would speak with me or answer. They think we're going to be bringing in, you know, murderers and rapists and all those things that maybe the stereotype of, of homeless people are. But Harris says anyone being considered for the village would undergo a background check and it would be an alcohol and drug free environment. And we'll know everything about these guys. We'll know which are the best fits, who will fit in a community situation like this and who will cooperate with each other. Um, anyone causing trouble will, as they say, be voted off the island. Harris says neighbors were also upset that she nor Appling gave them a heads up beforehand. She apologized for that, but says plans were leaked before they were ready to go public. It's an excellent idea. They're trying to put people into place. Alexis Sims is homeless. The 21-year-old suffers from lupus and recently got out of an abusive relationship. The autoimmune disease robbed Sims of her vision, causes joint pain, and damaged her skin. She's not eligible for a tiny home because she has her two-year-old and her mom with her, plus a baby on the way. They're all homeless, victims of bad circumstances. Appling and Sims have gone through the proper channels to find her a place to live, but to no avail. We took her down to the city council. She pled her case in front of the entire city council, the mayor, and we thought, well, somebody's going to do something. When nothing happened, I said, hey, I'm going to go buy you an RV and we'll put you back here in um, the back of the church and you can stay in there until we find you a place, and so that's what we did. 
now the church is in trouble. Kent County issued a zoning violation to Victory Church for setting up a commercial recreational campground. Now they're being fined $100 a day. We're people. We're humans. We, we eat like regular people. We breathe like regular people. Some people look at us as a, as a disease or something because we're homeless. We're regular people. And just as like everybody else, we're going to warm for this day, so do we. You know, everybody wants these guys to take care of themselves. Well, we want to set up a system that they can. Sue Harris with Port Hope of Delaware says she would like to charge $300 a month for rent, but says someone could work off the rent and chores if it's not manageable right away. And again, the tiny homes would be single occupancy, so that means one person per tiny home. Now, this doesn't solve the homelessness problem, but it is trying to move the needle in the right direction. Well, has this been done successfully, Shirley, anywhere else? It has. Um, tiny house villages have popped up across the country, Nashville, Portland, Seattle, Dallas. The list is really growing. It is becoming a national movement uh, to address what advocates are saying is a lack of affordable housing. And what about efforts? Have efforts uh, been made to smooth things over with neighbors against the idea? You know, there was a meeting this week. We haven't touched base with everyone just yet, but we are going to follow up. Uh, they, they wanted to meet with the neighbors, go over the plans, sort of uh, lay to rest some of the bad information going around. Um, and so they really want to just get the most accurate information about the project out there. Okay. Well, we'll follow up with all involved after the meeting online at newsworks.org slash Delaware. Thanks, Shirley.